Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 893. 94, 93, I can't remember now. <laughs> I already blanked on the number. Um, today we're going to talk about um, being sick and tired of being sick and tired. And if you do, you'll change. Otherwise, you might be a crab. And I'll explain what that means in a moment and give you a whole story and give you a little story from my own background of a particularly pivotal moment in my life when I was finally sick and tired of being sick and tired. Before I jump into all of that expose and give you all the good insights and steps and what you can do with it, let me introduce myself so you know who I am. In fact, I'm going to take time to introduce myself so this is my broadcast. My name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen that my name around the title somewhere. Um, I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. I've got another book brewing, we're not talking about it yet. Um, that book's for singles and couples, men and women, great book, I highly recommend it. Um, and I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine which is why I work mostly with women helping them create balance in love, life, and business. Well, occasionally men do seek my help as well. Being a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine is what inspired these talks almost three years ago now called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. It's a long introduction, I know, but I want to cover all the bases. So today we're going to talk at episode number 893, because I did start them all three years ago. And today we're going to talk about um, being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Now, context. Um, it's a common vernacular to say, you know, I'm sick and tired of this happening. I'm sick and tired of that, sick and tired of that. But how many people do you know, probably not yourself, but people you know who basically say that, but don't change anything. Like I'm sick and tired of always having the same problem in my job, but they never change their job. Or I'm sick and tired of the way my kids always do the same old thing, but they never talk to them and try to work things out to be different. We will, do th we will put up with stuff a long, long way and I can speak from experience on this one. Um, and the truth is, it's like, you know, we we're, only start, we're only really gonna change when we're really sick and tired of being sick and tired of something or situation or scenario. This happens in relationships, this happens in careers, this happens in look, living accommodations, happens in cities. I mean, I wasn't sick and tired, but I was certainly out of, out of alignment with where I was living, so why I moved to the United States. Um, no, no, no um, judgment about my home country because I have respect my home country. It wasn't that, wasn't it? But an experience I had, and I'll share this. Well, let me speak about the crab first. I didn't mention the crab in the title. So there's a story about how, unlike lobsters, crabs are actually cooked by putting them in a pot of warm or cold water and then heating it up to it boils. And apparently, the reason they do this is because when you do put crabs in cold water. They're comfortable, they're relaxed, because that's a natural environment. The natural habitat is cool water. They're in, you know, they're in the ocean most of the time. And when they're in water, it's cool water. But as the temperature rises, it's gradual. And frankly, well, I'll just say we do this too, but we have situations where if we move into cool water first and heat the water up slowly, we won't notice the change. Now with the crabs, what happens is they are in the water whilst it's comfortable and it's cool and it's getting warmer and it's getting warmer and the truth is they're adjusting to it without thinking about it now of course i'm basing this on what i've heard i've not and i had a conversation with the crab to find out for tr truth or not but that's the feeling i've had is the fact that as the temperature gets warmer and warmer they don't realize it's getting too hot until it's too late in fact what happens is the crabs realize it's, too, it's, it's so hot they want to get out but they've lost too much energy trying to maintain this their temperature inside and they end up Anyway, I didn't want to put you for crab dinner if you like eating crab for dinner. But that's the kind of the scenario, scenario about being sick and tired of being, of being sick and tired. Is if you don't know you're sick and tired, or should say you're not sick and tired of being sick and tired, I keep saying that frame over and over again, you probably won't change. You may put up with the same scenario. Now, personal experience. Um, I've shared before on other broadcasts that I was bullied in high school um, by a bunch of boys that were... Basically, they were looking to be the strong arm room group in the school, so they pushed everybody else around, and I was one of the people who got pushed around. The reason that happened, I believe, was because I was one of the few Jewish kids in the school. So even though the color of their skin was the same, I was different, so I was persecuted by these other kids who were not Jewish. So, 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 so it was. And this is back when I was uh, 12. So from 12 to 17, 16, 17, so four or five years has happened for. So basically, because I started getting bullied in, in the first year of high school, and it happened through the whole of high school until the fifth year, so it's five years. No. Fifth year, sixth year. It was, it was five years, give or take. I'm going to try to remember now, this is when I was in my teens. 
But what happened was over the period of time, I, every time they would show up, I'd run away or I'd hide or I'd get beaten up or I'd get pushed around or yelled at or persecuted or otherwise bullied. And I would basically spend most of my time avoiding them because I didn't have any other skill set or not to do differently. Now, fast forward to the fifth year. I was in a, I, one of the classes I was taking in high school was, was basically called technical drawing, which is basically draftsmanship, which is, you know, precursor to being an architect. Not a career I've pursued, but something I was, I enjoyed doing because I happened to like that sort of, I wasn't an artist, but I was good at drawing stuff using tools like T-squares, protractors, et cetera, et cetera. During the class, one of the kids who, one of the boys who was one of the bullies sat next to me in the school. Now we all have a, we have, um, a, t- uh, a, a, a drawing board? Yeah, a drawing board. That was it. I don't know what it's called. With a T-square and tools and compass and everything else. And during the class, this other guy, Stephen is his name. I'm not going to give his last name for protecting the guilty innocent, as it were. But basically, he grabbed a pair of um, divi- well, they were dividers. Because compasses have a point on one end and then a place for a pen or a screw on the other end. But dividers were basically like a um they're pointing on both ends it's like a like it's a measure th- it's basically to measure distances you put them on something and then you put them next to a ruler so you measure the distance on the ruler so both of them had sharp points on them and he kept poking at me with these through the class and he wasn't hitting me but he was threatening to this was the bullying thing it wasn't about actually causing violence but it was making me nervous and scared and during that class i finally snapped now, I don't mean snapped in the mode of getting crazy, in, but I decided, I finally said, enough. I basically got sick and tired, I've been sick and tired. I grabbed the T-square and I smacked him hard across the wrist with the sharp edge of the, it's actually plexiglass, plexiglass um, blade. And, it, and, it, and basically cut him open. Now, two things happened. <laughs> First of all, I got shit scared at the time that happened. I was like, oh crap, what have I done? Like, I thought, oh, he's going to beat me up after class. I'm in trouble now. Oh crap, what's going to happen? That was kind of my mindset after I did that. Immediate regret for what I'd done. But at the same time, I felt free. A part of me finally, I felt this place inside where I finally got to the place where I was no longer, I was afraid of what might happen, but I was not afraid of what, I, say it's almost, I was afraid of what happened, but I was, wasn't afraid of what was happening at the time. I felt free in that moment. The second thing that happened was that he stopped. In fact, what happened was they all stopped after that moment. Now, of course, had I known that I would stir up for myself like that in the first year, I would have gone through five years of school without any bullying, you know, hindsight 2020. But it took that much of a push to push me off the edge to have finally said enough and I stood up for myself. That's an example about being sick and tired of being sick and tired. And for me, it was a gateway in a way it was a sense basically where I started to trust myself it was probably the first time in my late teens because in my early teens oh that's another story in my late teens first time I really trusted myself as much as I did something that was outside my comfort zone big time I mean I was I was in the shakes afterwards I was so nervous not nervous nervous but so it was actually adrenaline probably so charged up the adrenaline for what I'd done but I'd broken free of that trap that or that cage I put myself in so now we'll talk about relationships <laughs> because there's relevance to that too. Is that quite a few people I know, mostly online, not so many people I know personally, have been in situations of relationships where they've been sick and tired of the relationship but they haven't been wanting to leave. And they've actually been sick and tired enough where they will keep maintaining the pain and suffering because they're not sick and tired of being sick and tired. I, and I keep using double level because it's the whole point. You might be saying, you know, I'm so tired, I'm so fed up with this relationship about working. I wish he would go get a job or I wish she would be more friendly when she comes home. Whatever those reasons are, we don't do anything about them. Now, there's two, cho- there's two perspectives when you become sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's when you finally had enough of complaining about something and complaining to a whole other conversation. Well, maybe I'll bring it up here. Is you might be willing to say to the other person, I'm being up, I'm feeling upset by what's happening. You'll actually be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so you actually say something to the other person, which might change the relationship. Like you might start being more affectionate ultimately, or you might at least say, look, this isn't working because I feel this, this, and this. Now I've talked before about ownership language in your relationship conversations, where it's not about blaming and judging the other person. It's about taking ownership for your own experience. And by having that place inside where you go, 
I'm done, I can't do this anymore. I need to have a conversation. Not to say we're over, because nine times out of 10, it may not necessarily need to be over. But by having the conversation, there's room, opportunity, a chance to say, can we change how we're doing things? Can we shift the relationship so you no longer have to be sick and tired? The idea of being sick and tired is like the baseline of, of discomfort. And when you finally go past that point of discomfort where you finally go, enough, I can't do it anymore. That's what I mean by sick and tired of being sick and tired. Now, if you're single and you're also sick and tired of having bad date experiences, I have some news for you. You don't have to keep doing that. And I mentioned this is, uh, let me say this. The idea of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, as I said, applies to many, many areas of life including where you live, how you live, your relationships, your business, your financial status, all these different things are places where you may become sick and tired of something about that situation. Whether it's that environment, that person, that scenario, and you want to change it, or you want to reframe how you're doing it. So if you're single and you're sick and tired of not having good dates, or sick and tired of lots of bad dates, or you're sick and tired of 17 other things, when you're finally ready to give that up, when you're finally sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you're willing to give up that paradigm and to get help, to get guidance, to get coaching, to get counseling, that's when you're on taking the steps towards freedom. The relationship game, the dating apps, the swipe left, swipe right, let's go on a date, check it out, failed again and again and again. When you're finally sick and tired of that paradigm of repeating the same pattern, expecting a different result, the definition of insanity, by the way, which is doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. When you shift that, when you understand that there is a breakthrough you can have by getting guidance and support from somebody who may have some skills, hint, hint, then you can shift your paradigm once and for all and start choosing what you really want from the right place. A lot of what I do in my coach, a lot of what I do in my work, period, is providing support for my clients to get clear about what's not working so they get clear about what does work and make it happen. That's why I have online courses. That's why I do my coaching. That's why I do a lot of support in my work with my clients because there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that can be changed with the right support. So if you're clear about your relationship paradigm, if you're single or get out of a bad relationship or you've got out the, the bad relationship the third time in a row, maybe it's time to realize that you're done with this. To say, you know what, I'm, uh, that's over. I'm willing to change now. I want something different. If that's true for you, I'm going to invite you to reach out to me. I have, as it, various tools, products, programs, coaching that can support you when you're shifting your paradigm if you're ready to do that because you're finally sick and tired of being sick and tired. I know so many times because so, some people who've worked with me have gone through looking at my work for years and gone, no, I can do it myself. I'm fine, I'll get out, I'll put up with it again, I'll make it happen, I'll make a shift, I'll make a change, etc., etc. But you don't have to wait that long. Now you can because <laughs> everyone has their choice but you can also make a choice to shift now rather than later if you're not happy with the way your dating life is going if you're not happy with the relationship experience you're having if you're not happy with what you're really getting in a relationship this is a good time to change now whether it's with working with me or doing something different in your own dating life do something different I'll put links in the comments you can reach out to me that'll help you with direction with clarity with focus and next steps but it's up to you. When you're really sick and tired of being sick and tired, when you're really willing to give up the old paradigm that's not working for you, when you're really ready to embrace how amazing it can be, that's when the good things can happen. But until then, you may just keep repeating the same old pattern again and again and again, doing the same things but different results, being sick and tired, but not changing. It's up to you, it's your choice. Now, I, I can offer support in other areas too, but my focus is about a relationship. But if you want some clarity of mindset about how you're shifting your beliefs, how you're shifting a paradigm around other areas of your life too, send me a message. I'm willing to talk and offer you some guidance and maybe even find a way to work, we can work together. I, I'm still looking for another words that are coaching because frankly, coaching is really a different paradigm. I do more than that. Um, but I can help you heal your wounded heart to get what you really want in love and relationships. So links will be in the comments you can check out later on once I sign off. And I'm gonna ask you to check in for yourself. In what parts of your life are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? And what parts of your life are you just simply sick and tired of? I invite you to put comments below in, in, in 
below the video to say what it is you're sick and tired of in your life, in your relationships, in your business, in your career, whatever you want to share about. If you don't want to do it there, you can message me as well because sometimes you want to keep it private. I understand that. But I'm inviting you to look at your life and making sure that every area of your life is actually thriving and alive and happy so you're never sick and tired of anything. That's what I wish for you. That's what I encourage you to look at doing for yourself. That's what I'm working on for myself as well. So reach out if you need support. Check on the links I put in the comments and get support so you can get where you want to go. This is my daily Facebook Live. Just make sure it's complete before I said that. Um, if you haven't seen me my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. You can find me here. If you want to watch the replays, they're on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author, although not all of them are there because Facebook doesn't show all of them. 800 and plus broadcasts, it's not always visible. But you can find them on my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel, YouTube channel is Barry Selby, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Mask, and we can peruse titles more easily because they're listed more effectively than they are on Facebook. Sorry, Facebook, YouTube does it better. And you can search through for titles and keywords that speak to you. If this is helping you, please let me know. If this is helping you, reach out for support. If this is helping you, take this to heart. You can transform your life if you want to, but don't wait till you're sick and tired of it. There's easy ways of doing it. With that, I thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate you being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.